Hi, right, ma'am. How are you? Hi. I just finished watching you on YouTube. Did you really? Too. Oh, look at so that. Glad you came. We're celebrities. Look at yes. that. Yes. How are you, ma'am? Fine. Thank May I come you. in? Let Thank you. Let me call you back, Tanisha. Yes, I did. I was like, oh, my God. You got a New Yorker. Yes, I do. Very nice. You have a steam boiler. Okay. With so, something else going on here. What else do you have? You have hot water heating off of it as well. Okay, tell me what's going on. What's, why okay. are we here? So what happened was um, it started sending water to the boiler and it started overheating the radiators and the water was coming up and leaking all over the place. So, and I came down, I shut it off from here. From where? Um, the switch? From here, yeah, but okay. I turned it back on because I turned it off there. Okay. I looked at you this morning. Okay. While you was giving me these exams as to what part was what. Oh, <laughs> and, very good. And, um, okay, what I, what I realized is that This light yeah. keeps coming on. When I come on, it resets itself okay. like you had to instruct yep. it. And it keeps coming on, but it sends the, um, signal to the, signal automatic, to the feeder. automatic feeder. It'll shut off, okay. and then it'll come back on. Okay. And then uh, what I do here is clicking in that. Okay, in inside this, there. Right. Gotcha. How long and has it been going on for? Just today? yesterday. Okay. Yeah, just yesterday, and I turned it off, so I, was, I called you today. Okay. So, yeah. um, approximately how old was the boiler? 2007. Looks like install, a manufacturer date. Okay, look at the date right there. Oh, uh, 2007? Yeah, we okay. replaced it. So, I don't know. Probably 2008, I don't, 2009. Okay. I don't know how long. Yeah. 15 years ago, maybe. Okay. What well, do you normally keep the heat at? Temperature on the thermostat? Up now, up now. So get, my like my house. wife. Yes, it's what the reason being is because it's drafty, and I know it's draft, so okay. I gotta get windows. So I have to warm up. So I'll keep it. It's supposed to be at like seventy-two, and I'll keep okay. it at seventy-eight. Ooh. Yeah. 76. Okay. Okay. A little bit on the toasty side. Okay, but it's whatever your comfort level is fine. Doesn't matter. Um, and when's the last time you had any maintenance repair or, or maintenance on the system? I want to say last year. Okay. And if not last year, I know you want to say it. You want to say last year, right? But because I'm, th actual... I'm, I'm thinking it was last year. I'm terrible with time, but um, time flies. If it's not last year, it was definitely that following year, the year okay. before. So within the last two years, you had yes. maintenance. Mm -hmm. And any repairs in the system since it was installed? Um. Yes, they changed. They this, changed some piping that there. Pipe there. Okay. Um. I don't want to say it was last year. Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. it was last year. And yeah. Let me ask you a question. This, this And I've had that 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 pipe that you blew into that you thought pigtail? was clogged. Yes, yes, the pigtail. That was <laughs> yes, she's good. <laughs> that was That was cleaned um, or replaced recently? I don't know how recently. Okay. Why is there a big uh, steel thing in front of the boiler? Because this was the, from the old one. That's They never took it. They never yeah, took it. Okay. And I just Okay. We'll move it. I don't get your hands dirty. Okay. So let's uh, turn the power back onto the boiler, okay. and let's see. Uh, let's let's see if it does what what you uh, prompted the call to us to, to figure out. Okay, so the red light was blinking. Oh, that's not really bothering me too much. So it's blinking, and then it's going to send. Oh, I have the video. Well, that, that what well, because it's now you restored power to the boiler, so it's going to go through a startup sequence. Yeah. And as long as there's water in the boiler, eventually that light is going to stop. Um, we have a sight glass that we can barely see. Let's see. It looks like it's full of water, to be honest with you. It appears your boiler could be... looks like it's full of water. It looks can be deceiving, but... Okay, that's one of the little clicks. Ah, uh, yeah, so that's not normal. No. Okay. I see, what, I see what you mean. Yep. Alright, Peter, I'm gonna give you the keys. Grab the tool bag and uh and, and grab a noose so I can kill myself. Please <laughs> don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, it's Friday. It's, it, it's better than Monday. Right? Yeah, yes. Okay. But of course the one day that I get off. You have to deal with this nonsense. Yeah. See? Yeah. 
So the, the noise that we're hearing right now, that noise mm -hmm. is coming from within the low water cutoff. And the other noise, which is close to the front of the boiler, which is coming from the valve, the gas valve there, right? Okay. That is the gas valve for a split second getting voltage to open. And now look, it's still making that noise. The vent damper is making some noise right now because it's opening. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to close because there's an interruption of the safety circuit. Now, you have a, you know, you don't, you have a, a fairly newer, I know it's 15 years old, but you have a fairly newer gas appliance that heats your home, right? And there's a lot of safety components on this that exists because of basically trial and error. You know, until someone got injured or died, you know, there wasn't a safety on the exhaust gas should the chimney be blocked. Um, <clears throat> you know, when, when years ago, before there was modern technology, there wasn't low water cutoffs that would turn off the, the, the power to the, to the system to prevent the boiler from running, you know, when there's no water. So here you have a bad low water cutoff because of the noise it's making like that. And that... <laughs> is now feeding the boiler, which is overfeeding the boiler. So we're gonna close this valve here. So you don't run into a case where now your whole system is flooded, which it probably is already. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that video, huh, Peter? All right, so you have a defective low water cutoff which is that box there. And it's, it's, it's a shame. Um, whatever, it can be fixed. Peter, we have a uh, PSC 24 in a truck. Lower, steam lower, lower cut off. All right, we have to go to the supply house and get a PSC 80224 to replace this one that's 16 years old. Question is, how many gallons of water, how many buckets Let's do the bucket challenge. How many buckets are going to be to drain this boiler to a proper level? Last time I said four. Four? And it was eight. Okay. Let's make sure our valves can are turnable. Let's do the one on the bottom, if you wouldn't mind. I tried doing that one before, and it wouldn't work for me. There you go. Good. We have a drain right here. We'll take the little bit of cutoff out of the... That would suck. Yeah, we have to go get one since we didn't have one. You know, let me, uh, let me, oh, sorry. You know, let's straighten that boiler. Here we go. Ma'am, you got a sink down here? Excellent. All over there? Right where? Right there, perfect. All right, excellent. All right, let's play a game. How many buckets? You wanna play a game for, for money? Or you want to play? Uh, we'll play a, just a, a friendly game yeah. of chance. Okay. How many buckets that are near full are we gonna have to take out of this board to restore water level to the proper level? Minus what? No, no. My, how many are we gonna have to take out? Six buckets. Two. You go two. I am gonna say I could be a real. A nasty, Four. nasty guy, like the price of right. You know, someone bids, you know, uh, $299, another one bids like 300 All right, I am going to say three. All right? So you have six. He has two, and I have four. Three? I have three, okay. And it's not the closest without going over. It'll be the closest, whoever's closest. All right, so while you're doing that, we're gonna take out the, the low water cutoff and uh, make sure that's functional. All right, we've got the front cover off. A lot of rust present here. Maybe when they cleaned their pigtail a while ago. And this is bad too, by the way. We have the harness there. Let's, uh, I'm gonna need a little baby channel lock and a Phillip. We have green, red, and blue. I'll take the big giant. So we have green, 
red and blue. I'm gonna take a picture of that. All right, that's bucket number one. Okay. Dead low on a cutoff. Now look, she got some water in there maybe. Oh yeah, look at that. We have a little charred mark right there. Yeah, we definitely had some rusty water here dripping onto this thing. Question is, who was that careless to not cover up the low at a cutoff when they took the pigtail off? Okay, and now we have two Phillips screws holding on the control onto the probe. We'll take those out and then take the probe out. The biggest one we got? Cool. Let's see if I'm gonna get lucky today. What do you think, Peter? Am I gonna get lucky today? Hope. You'd hope. You think I had my Wheaties this morning? Uh, no. <laughs> I had a I had an everything bagel toaster with butter. It's better than Wheaties. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Okay, plan B. Get another long, uh, long crescent, and we're gonna use brute force. <laughs> she ain't going. Get the, uh, let's get a 24 Coil. inch and then this and a small one. Some yeah, no, don't do any coral. It'll come out. So we have to take the, the handle off of these valve in order to take top out and Now the cyclist is no more water left, but we should change the cyclist too. They, they didn't leave any room, wiggle room here to do anything. You know, let's take the cyclist out, see if we can clean it. And if not, then we'll replace it and we'll definitely change the uh, the nuts and the washers. So Peter, you were the closest without, forget about going over, you were the closest. This is a, almost two buckets. Sweet. <laughs> And then uh, you have the wrench, right? Yeah, it's Good. So I'm gonna see if I can smack that out of there. All right, Peter's working on the sight glass. I have a 24 inch wrench. Oh my God, no they didn't. Wow. <laughs> Is that a water heater? No way. And they use that upstairs, but it doesn't work. They use that, yeah, for Hydronic heating storage. <laughs> you know what? You got to give people credit sometimes for being creative, but this is just a definition of stupid. You have your Lowe's water heater. Want to know how I know? You want to know how I know this came from Lowe's? Because of the name? No. The plastic valve on the bottom. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is this leaking? Yeah. Okay, let's work on your heat again. All right, Peter. You good? What do you think? See if I can get this out. Oh yeah. Heard that, huh? Is there a sink there or is that just a drain? Yeah. It's in the way. It's in the way. Okay. You're annoying. All right. 
right, we have some pipe dope on our new probe. We're not using Teflon tape. Page three of the manual states, do not use PTFE tape. Use a pipe sealant instead. Read the manuals, do not put Teflon tape on the threads. All right, so Peter re attached. All right, so Peter reattached the upper and lower valves. I wouldn't bother even putting the screws in. Just make sure they're both open. Yeah. We made lemonade from lemons. Perfect. I reconnected our wires to our automatic feeder and to low voltage control on the boiler. Good? All right, the final answer was two buckets. Let's turn this back on. And let's go through a sequence. Let's open up the boiler feed valve. There's no bypass here, but if I push this in, it will manually feed. We can also feed manually by, I guess, taking water from the bottom of the water heater and bringing it to the boiler drain. Right now we're pushing in the manual feed button that requires power in order to feed the boiler. The installer did not install a set of manual bypass valves, which is preferred, and I think it does specify that in the installation manual. We may be holding this down for a while, maybe a good minute. If I let go of it, still going to feed because now the low water cutoff is sending the signal to the feeder to feed. So keep an eye on that. I'll edit out maybe period that we wait. Okay, so it stops feeding because it doesn't want to overfeed the system in the case there's an error. So let's turn power off. We're going to power cycle the system. So rebooting the startup sequence and it'll refill again. We drained all the water. So there was nothing here. So it's going to take a, a while for it to feed through there. All right, I got tired of manually feeding. I know there's some cocky on here and it's probably gonna be my demise right now. Oh, you son of a bitch. Maybe I get on this one. Oh, it sucks. No, this one, I wanna try to get this one right there. <laughs> May need to wire brush it a little bit. Let's see if you can get it on there. If you get started, we'll use the wrench for the rest. <laughs> Freaking my luck. Is it really that tight? Yeah. Nah. Damn. All right, try taking it off. Let's maybe get a wire brush. Let's try this. Take that off. We'll put it on. Oh, no, I can't even use that. No, that's, oh no, we could. Absolutely, yeah, we can use this. Yep, that's the bottom of the wet return before it goes into the, uh, the Hartford loop. So if the threads are good. <laughs> yeah, and they sweat it on, so we can't even adjust it. There you go, right there. Yeah, so open the plastic valve at the bottom of the water heater. And here you go. And now we have water from the bottom of the water heater. And now we're gonna wait 
for our water level to rise. Imagine holding in that button all this time. <laughs> yeah, sucks big time. So now we're feeding from here up to the Harfer loop and inside the bottom of the boiler. Did you take the rod and shove it in through there? Or the, or the, or the, the string? Not the string, the, the wire that I was using? On the bottom now. Oh no. Oh yeah. Then it's probably still clogged. All right, taking that out. And hopefully we don't deal with the flood right here. This is so dumb. Lady spent good money putting this in and they just put in like garbage. Not a care in the world. All right, so take that out. There's nothing, if it's clogged, it's clogged. So let's take that out. Yeah, so now you're getting more from the top. Yeah. So let's close the top. Yeah, let it be, let it drain out, whatever, it's fine. Let's close the top. All right. Okay, that's closed. Now that little piece of wire that I was using, which, yep, you're gonna shove that in there. And then as soon as that's clear, you're gonna have, let's put this rag down here. As soon as that's clear, as soon as water starts flowing out of there, you're gonna put that back in there. And it's gonna be as hot as the water heater is, as water is hot. Let's keep that in mind. All right, keep going all the way in there. All the way in, doesn't wanna go in? That's how freaking clogged that is. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, we got through a little bit. Yeah. All right, now pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, see the drain port right there, the bottom? That right there? Just take that out. Little baby channel lock. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. Nope, wrong way. Nope. Grab a hold of that. Take that out. moving mm -hmm. good all right we'll take that out that's the uh the drain port on the bottom of the lower valve is it that hard to take off or is it just a crumbling yeah let me see that again for a second no no the lower one See that one right there? Yeah. That's the one, but you have to, uh, <laughs> you might as well take the whole thing out now. Take it out, we'll do it on the fly, quick. <laughs> take it out, you'll be all right. Here comes the water, okay. Now, take that, uh, it's hot? No, 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 I'm okay. Well. Take the wire, shove it through the hole. Not that hole, the, the, the hole, there you go. Straight across, right into the border. And once you clear that, water's gonna start pouring out of there. So I gotta get both. Oh well, yeah, you'll be all right. Half the other piece ready. Does it go in there all the way? Nope. A piece of solder would work well as well. You know, I normally use the rods, but since the pipe's in the way. Oh, well, I got through. There you go. So I yeah. got through before. And okay. That's how clogged this thing is with cocky. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Shit, nothing's coming out of there. Oh my God. There you go, use a zip tie. It's not going in. Okay, hold on. All right, I used the sacrificial um, sight glass rod. 
There you go. Put it on her. It's as warm as the water heater was warm. And try to get the test plug back in there. And now we have a clear bottom valve and we'll have an accurate measurement of the water level. And I just bent that rod just enough to get in there. All right, so now we're full. <laughs> All right, so let's get the uh, the bucket emptied and then we'll, uh, let's drip in there. Well, it's just the rag. All right, so now that we know the sight glass is clean, the bottom valve is good, the uppers are always good, but it's always good to take the rod out and shove it in there. Normally this pipe is in the way, you can just go in there like that and have a bucket underneath. So, you know, these rocket scientists didn't think that to put maybe a uh, 45 on there and go across or put an elbow here and elbow over a little bit. They weren't thinking about the next guy. They just wanted to get in and out as quickly as possible. So we have a bad pressure gauge, but we could change that during a maintenance and do a tune up, combustion test, all that good stuff. I don't see any carbon in the flu, so that's a good thing. Hopefully she's burning okay. And our relief valve. Peter, go find the relief valve, please, with this. Mm -hmm. I sure we've got 15 PSI relief valve. Should be on the other side of the boiler. Good? Yeah. Perfect. All right, the water level is starting to come down. See right there. So we're gonna fill that up about, eh, I guess I'll do it to the rest of the bucket. We could be a little bit on the high side. I got the frame down anyway, I'm below what it cut off tonight. All right, so we're gonna drain this down until the low water light comes on. And then we're gonna let it fill the boiler with the automatic feeder, and that way we can test the water safety side of the boiler. Um, hopefully she'll fire up now with no problem. I think the boiler's running. Can I see your kick on? Yeah. Yep, cool. And then this circulator, which is not being used, yeah. There it is. So there's the red light. Excellent. Let's close that valve. We're going to wait for us to fill back up. Usually a 30 second delay, sometimes up to two minutes, and we'll make sure it fills it up to the proper amount. That water level slowly rising. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Take a look under the hood. New Yorker six section. <sighs> 175,000 BTUs. You know, we have those big giant houses in Woodsburg that use this size boiler. Big boiler. Yeah. I don't think you have 20, 30 radiators in this house, right? No, I probably got like nine or 11. Radiator? Yeah. Yeah. Nine, nine, right? Yeah. yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people who call themselves plumbers, they like to. Um, they like to take out a boiler, let's say is, you know, it's got a V8 engine, mm -hmm. but you know, the driver doesn't need a V8 engine. So they'll give you like a V12, <laughs> right? Only because that's what they know to put in, right? So it's the same thing, you know, you have this boiler that's, listen, it is, I'm not saying you replace it, you know, it's fine. Until it has a fatal problem and it has an internal leak where water's coming out and leaking on the floor or and going up the steam's going up the chimney, until that happens, this thing will run until that happens. When that happens, you'll put the right size in. Or whoever lives here will put the right size in because you running this at that's oversized for the home, 
you may think, okay, it'll give you a lot of heat faster, but it's also not good for the boiler because it, it, it'll do something what we call short cycling. It means it'll run, create, create all this heat real fast, but the house can't get rid of it fast enough, so it turns itself off. And then it turns itself off for a little bit of time, then it turns back on, on, off, on, off, on, off, and that's called short cycling. It's not good for the boiler because everything is getting more wear and tear. Every time that click of the gas valve that was making that stupid click before because of the low water cutoff was telling it to be not behave, uh, you know, that decreased the life expectancy of it. That's why, you know, I said, we're gonna put this part in, we're gonna make sure everything else works fine before I, you know, tell you what actually it's all gonna be because we're still testing. But the gas valve runs, the new low water cutoff senses the water when it should, when it didn't sense water, it waited a period of time with the flashing red light, it went solid, the low water cutoff, um, fed the automatic feeder with power, the, aut the automatic feeder fed the boiler with the right amount of water, and it turned itself off a little over halfway on the cyclist, which you, which you can now see. We did replace the, the nuts and the washers, I mean the bolts, the bolts, the washers and the nuts that hold the glass in place, we cleaned the glass and it's fine. It's a little dirty, but if it was a little damaged or cracked, we would change it, but there's no need to change the glass, it's fine. Other than that, you do need a good cleaning because the boiler is filthy <laughs> in there. It's uh, quite dirty, but our flame, our flame is okay, could be better, but something that can be addressed during a tune-up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hoped, I hoped, I hope you enjoyed watching our last service call of the Friday, the 29th of March. Peter, Easter falls on April Fool's. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe the Easter Bunny will come to you and go, ah, April Fools. Yeah, I don't get anything from it. Easter Bunny just it totally takes a, a dump on you. Yeah, that sucks. Well, guys, all those who celebrate Easter, I hope you have a uh, a joyous and meaningful day. I don't know if you say just Happy Easter. I don't know if you say Happy Easter or... Happy Easter. Happy Easter, very nice. Um... For all of you who, who just are know exactly where we are, we are right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here it comes, Peter. KU. Oh, God, KU. It is King Umberto's Pizza. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. King Umberto. It is, yeah. It's good. It's really good. I happen to really like marinara. Right? Yep. I really feel bad for all the, my very religious Orthodox Jewish members of the community that have never experienced King Umberto. Because technically it's not kosher. It's not. Really? It's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's far from that. Oh. <laughs> I really genuinely feel bad for them because they've never experienced a couple things. Number one, they've never experienced King Umberto and, and like Alaskan King Crab Legs. <laughs> you a pepperoni slice, right? No, I don't. You know, I don't. That's one thing I don't eat. That is true. That's right. All right. Pepperoni so we're gonna park right here, and we're gonna have some KU, and I'm gonna show you guys some KU that we're gonna have, about to have, and then we're gonna take it to go. I'm gonna park right here, and we're gonna go inside KU. Ready, Peter? I'm ready. Oh yeah! All right. Thank you. And that just looks obscene, by the way. Buffalo chicken. Oh my god. You guys really have no idea. <laughs> You guys really have no idea what you guys are missing here. I feel bad for everyone who does not live outside of like Italy and New York to experience great pizza. See so if you take a look at it, it's got a nice undercarriage. It's got a nice little crisp bite to it, right? It's got a little bit of Parmesan on there. It doesn't really need it, but delicious. Nice, nice pizza.